We're asking, when does a hobby become an obsession? And here to discuss it with me, psychologist Dr. Joanna Livingston. Good morning. Good morning. And, Hi. And uh, Aaron Weedall, who is a detectorist. That's his hobby, a detectorist. What is it? What's a detectorist? Well, it's uh, where you head out with a metal detector, either on the beach or in the ah, park, gotcha. in the fields, and you, you hunt for history, basically. Hunt for history. That's a great answer when somebody asks you what your hobby is. I hunt for history. And um, h- how expensive a hobby is it, Aaron? I mean, you, do, you need some pretty high-tech equipment, right? Well, there are entry-level machines that start from, you know, £99, uh, right up to over a thousand or, or even up to ten thousand some of these high-tech pieces of equipment but to get into the hobby no it, it can be fairly cheap it can be and it's a great hobby to get into especially if what you do for a living your job your lifestyle anything like that is very stressful uh, detecting can be a good release it can be a good uh, a good stress reliever and it's got a great way of getting you outdoors of course isn't it it is it is um whether you're in the beach, whether you're on a farmer's field with his permission, of course, or or whether you're on a club dig, you're out in the open air, you're out there for a few hours, three, four hours, you're walking for a few miles. It's just nice to be just you, the machine, fresh air, the sounds of the sea or the country, and it's just nice. It's really good. So it started out a few years ago as a hobby. You've, you, you, I think you watched somebody else doing it on YouTube and, and decided to give it a go, and, and now it's sort of become a bit more all-consuming, has it? It has. It is one of those things where people say, oh, do you know, I'd really love to do that. I've always wanted to do it. Do it. Do it. I did it. Just grab yourself a machine, pick one up. There's plenty of places where you can get one. And yeah, I went out, I I went to the beach and and started finding interesting things, you know, things people had left behind, things that had been buried in the sand for a a few years. And you start to get uh, consumed by it. You start, it starts to take over a little bit too much, my wife would uh, would say. I was going to say that. Does your loved ones start to think this is, okay, you've gone too far now. Well, now you've bought this new super whiz-bang metal uh, detector and you're spending hours on it. And you've started your own YouTube channel. Is that right? That's right. Um, I started uh, going out detecting and I thought, well, it would be good if I could document what I'm finding and maybe put out tips that I'm learning along the way for anybody else that was in my position so they could watch the videos, see how I'm doing it, pick up the tips that I've picked up. And, and it's just a good way of documenting what you found and where you found it, just for your own records, really. And and the, the channel I've got now, South Coast Detecting, um, it's it's on its way slowly to 4,000 subscribers. It's not a huge amount in comparison to some channels, but it's slowly building. That's amazing. I mean, let's bring in um, our psychologist, Dr. Joanna Livingston. Joanna, um, this started out as a little a little hobby, and he's now got 4,000 followers in his own TV yeah. channel, and, and his mm-hmm. wife's starting to make comments about it becoming an obsession. Is there sort of a line that, that, does, that can get crossed? Well, I suppose um, something can be very enjoyable and take up someone's time, but when it becomes an obsession, it almost becomes something that people can't stop doing. So it's got an addictive element to it. So I can imagine if there's a lot of likes on the YouTube page, then that might become you know, a more addictive aspect of that. Um, and I suppose it's not really a problem unless it starts to become either a problem for other people and it can impact on relationships or it can become a problem for oneself if it starts to impact on other areas of, of their life. I don't know how it does for Aaron, whether it's starting to impact on his work um, or um, social life. Aaron, it is it? Is there any sort of impact, negative, negative impact? Um, slightly, just slightly. Uh, I did go through a phase of talking about it all the time, and my wife is just not interested. She really doesn't care. <laughs> really doesn't. So I, I, I have to sort of reel it in a little bit and just remember she doesn't care. Don't talk about it. Oh, but so, but you've got four thousand other people subscribing to your YouTube channel uh, that, that are very happy, I'm sure, to talk to you about it. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and talking about it. Uh, Ten second top tips, Joanna, for making sure that a hobby is a healthy thing. <laughs> Well, it sounds as though Aaron has got good insight into the fact that it might, you know, bore other people. So having insight into, into that and um, knowing when to sort of draw the line, either about talking about it or engaging in that hobby. Um, just noticing, you know, how much enjoyment there is from it, if there's any negative aspects, like it starts to impact on other parts. Of Thank you life. very much. Sorry, we're just about yeah. out of time, but we appreciate that uh, input. John Beatty's next.